Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you how we can write balanced chemical equations. So we can write balanced chemical equations to represent chemical reactions. Now we've learned already about what chemical reactions are. So here, let us see what we can do. Here, first off, we're given a word equation. Now what does it mean by word equation? So obviously, you'll see words in a word equation. Just like you see the word hydrogen, you see the word oxygen, you see the word water. And also it looks like an equation. You know what an equation is? It's when like you combine two things and it forms something else. So here, do you see these, this addition sign and this arrow? This means that it's an equation. This is called a word equation. Now before I introduce what a chemical equation is, now before that, let us learn some new terminology. Now first, we know here on the left hand side, I had Hydrogen, this was an element. I learned that this was an element. Oxygen here, this was an element also. I learned this. And when it's chemically combined together, it would form this compound, water. I learned this as well. Now, sometimes it may not always be an element combining with an element. It could also be a compound reacting with a compound. So usually we'll not say element plus element forms a compound. So rather we have a different terminology, we would say on the left hand side, this is what we say there are reactants. On the left hand side of the equation, when I mean the left hand side, it means the left hand side of the arrow. So hydrogen is a reactant, it will react with another reactant, which is oxygen. And this addition sign, it means that it's being chemically combined together. So they're being chemically combined together. All right. And this arrow over here, it means that when the two reactants, they are chemically combined together with the addition sign, it will form. So this arrow, it means it forms. Now, what will it form? It will form on the right hand side of the equation, it will form what we say the product. The product is the substance that we, that is produced, the product. So now let's read this word equation again. You have one reactant. It is chemically combined together with another reactant. And it will form the product here. Now you know what all of these arrows, these signs, and these words, what do they mean? Now for a chemical formula or a chemical equation here, we will not have any words. Okay, that's the first point. Instead, we'll have their chemical formulas. What does it mean by chemical formula? Chemical formula meaning basically it's similar to their atomic symbols. Like for hydrogen, we have learned that hydrogen has the atomic symbol of H. But you notice here at the chemical formula, I'm not using H, I'm using H2. Now, the reason why I'm using H2, it's because hydrogen gas, it exists as H2. It's not existing as H actually, to be honest. It's because this is stable. You'll learn more about this in chemistry if you take it in senior form. So actually hydrogen gas or even oxygen gas here. You have learned that the atomic symbol for oxygen is O, but it does not exist as O by itself, oxygen gas. It exists as O2 because this is the most stable form, stable. We'll learn more about this in senior chemistry. And for water, we have the chemical formula H2O, which you know. So here for a chemical equation, for a chemical equation, we will have the chemical formula, which is like H2O2, H2O, and also equation because it has the addition sign and the arrow. So just a reminder, the substances on the left, they are called the reactants. These are the reactants. And the substance on the right, It'll be called the products. On the, when I mean on the right, it'll be the right side of the arrow. And the arrow will be only facing one direction. It'll be facing this direction, the right hand side. So now let us learn about chemical equations. So first off, we will need to write down the reactants and products using their chemical formula. So we've written it down already. Now here, there are also some diagrams here to help you out. So let us see what they are. So H2, that means there are two hydrogen atoms. 
So 1 and 2. Oxygen here, it would mean for oxygen it's O2. So this is one, this is another oxygen atom, two oxygen atoms as well. But let's look at water here. Water, you form one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now my question is, is the left-hand side of the equation and right-hand side of the equation, are they having the same number of atoms? You'll notice that no. You'll notice that the number of oxygen atoms on the left here, there are two of them here, there are two, but here there's only one. So actually the number of atoms, it is not balanced, it's unbalanced. And just like in math, you've learned that the left hand side should be equal to the right hand side. Now for chemical equations, it is the same thing. The number of atoms on the left hand side, left hand side meaning in this case the reactants here, should be the same as the number of atoms on the right hand side. So what are we going to do? So what we're going to do is we're going to add something to the right hand side. So clearly over here I have two, uh, two oxygen atoms and I have only one. What could I do? Obviously the best thing is to make this number also into two, right? To make oxygen atoms into two. Now how can I do that? Well, obviously, the only way for you to do that is so that you have one more, yeah, one more water molecule present. But how are you going to express it in numbers? So here, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and add a number two at the front of the chemical formula. Now, this two, there's one very special thing about it, is that there is an imaginary bracket in front of it. So let me write it better. There is an imaginary bracket in front of it. And two. Now what does this mean? What does this imaginary bracket mean? It means that this two over here, it would mean that there are two water molecules. That's what you see I've drawn here. There are two water molecules. Now if I don't have this imaginary bracket, if I didn't have it, for instance, then you would think that, hey, sir, you would think that, hey, this is 2H2. You would think that there are 2H2 and still just one oxygen atom. You would be like, hey, this sounds like math. Just like, for example, 2XY. 2XY, it means that this is equal to 2X times by Y. But here, remember in chemistry, when we write the two in front, the co this is called the coefficient, by the way, guys. This is called the coefficient. It would mean that there is an imaginary bracket in front of it. Okay? So that's the first point. So it's not like math. This one is a bit tricky. There's an imaginary bracket. Now that we know there's an imaginary bracket there, let me rub it out. Coefficient. Now let's try to see the number of atoms now. Do they match? Let's count the number of hydrogen atoms again. On the left, I have one, two. Oxygen atoms uh, over here on the left, also I'll use green, one, two. How about on the right? Now you can see clearly I have two oxygen atoms. Now oxygen atoms, they're perfectly balanced. But now do you see there's a problem? Now after adding the coefficient of two in front of H2O, now I have four hydrogen atoms. Now that's, that's a different problem now. Now you've added too many hydrogen atoms. So, after doing this, now what I'm going to do next is, look, what I've done here. I've added a 2 in front of hydrogen here. Let me add back the 2 here. I've added a 2 in front of hydrogen here. Now, why did I add a 2 in front of hydrogen here? Now, what does this 2 actually mean? So, to tell you guys, this 2, when you add the coefficient in the front, it would mean that you can times it by this number you can times it by this number. Now actually in front, at, behind oxygen, there is a one here. To tell you the truth, there is a one here. But just like in math, we do not write the one. Also in chemistry, we do not write the one or in science here. So it's two times two. What's two times two here? This is four. That means I'll have four hydrogen atoms. And you can see it makes sense. I have one, two, three, four. How for oxygen? 
it's the same thing. It's two times the number here, which is one, but actually it does not exist there. But we know it's one. So two times one is two times one is two. So there are two oxygen atoms. So one, two. Now over here, why did I add a two here? Why did I add a two here? Because now you can do the math. This means two times two, which would mean that there are four hydrogen atoms. And you can see now I have one, two, three, four, four oxygen atoms, and I have two oxygen atoms. So in total, on the left here, I have four hydrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms, and you see now the left hand side perfectly balances with what I wrote here on the right hand side of the arrow. Left hand side is equal to right hand side. That's perfect. Four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So the overall chemical equation, the balanced chemical equation for this would be this. 2H2 plus O2 and you'll form to get 2H2O. Okay? And that's how you balance chemical equations. So you can see now the number of atoms are the same, so they are balanced. So let's do some questions now. Let's practice some questions. So this is activity 13.8. Carbon, which is C, let's go ahead and write that down. C reacts with, remember, reacts with means it's chemically combined. So this is reacts mean with is the plus sign. With oxygen, oxygen here, they've given you the chemical formula, so just copy it. O2 to form. Now, to form, what does to form mean? It means the arrow. To form means the right, and the arrow is facing the right side. To form carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide, let me write it in this way so it's easier. C for carbon. And dioxide has O2 here. So do you see I translated this statement or this phrase into a chemical formula just by how they have written it? So in the exam, you'll also need to know how to translate such phrases or such statements into a chemical formula. So here, let's see whether the left-hand side and the right-hand side, whether they are balanced or not. Here I have one carbon atom on the left hand side. How about on the right hand side? Yep, perfect. I have one carbon atom here. So carbon is perfectly balanced. Also here on, let's see, what color shall I use? Maybe this one. Left hand side, I have two oxygen atoms. Okay, this is oxygen. And here on the right hand side, that means the product side, I also have two oxygen atoms. That means now you can see on the left hand side, it's perfectly balanced. The number of atoms are balanced. So this equation is actually already balanced. You don't need to balance it. Let's try another one. Argon H2, now let's write it down. H2 reacts with, reacts with meaning a plus sign. This is the plus sign, the addition sign. Chlorine, which is the other element, or in this case, we would, it's better to use the word reactant. Let me use purple chlorine. It's Cl2. They're giving you the chemical formula to form, to form, let's use black for that. To form means the arrow facing the right side to form hydrogen chloride. Okay. Hydrogen chloride, which is Cl. Okay, now let's see. On the left-hand side, how many hydrogen atoms do I have? On the left-hand side, I have two hydrogen atoms. And how many chlorine atoms do I have? I have also two chlorine atoms. How about on the right-hand side? Right-hand side, I only have one hydrogen atom. And I could immediately see that they are not balanced. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and write for chlorine as well. 
For chlorine also, I only have one chlorine atom. Only one. So it's also not balanced here. So which one am I going to balance? Let's say, let's say, for example, I start off with hydrogen. I just look at hydrogen here. So I'm going to look at hydrogen atom here. How can I balance the hydrogen atom? So obviously, on the left-hand side, I have two. And on the right-hand side, I have one. So how can I balance it? I can balance it by adding a two in front of it, right? So that it becomes two hydrogen atoms. Now remember, it's not just two you're adding, you're adding an imaginary bracket. Now imagine there is an imaginary bracket here. After adding the imaginary bracket, now how many hydrogen atoms are there now? I'm going to rub this out and let's count. So remember I said you're going to times it. And what's underneath here? There is one, right? So it's two times one. That means now you have two hydrogen atoms. That's perfectly now matching on the left-hand side. And how about for chlorine? Also, it's two times here. I'll rub it out so it's easier to see. It's also to remember there is a one here, but we don't write it because it just looks weird. So it's two times one. What's two times one? It's also two. So I also have two chlorine atoms now. Now, after doing this, remember to rub out the imaginary bracket. I sh there shouldn't be any imaginary bracket there. That's why it's, it's called imaginary, right? So now, two hydrogen atoms on the left hand side, two hydrogen atoms on the right hand side. Perfect. So reactant side and product side, they're perfectly balanced. Two chlorine atoms on the reactant side, two chlorine atoms on the product side. There, boom, perfect. So here you go. This is your chemical formula for this.